So, a major scale is a musical representation of numbers 1 to 15, with the curious absence of number 13. When we are looking to what notes these numbers or rather overtones hit, what notes they land on, so to speak, we find either perfect or major intervals when we scale them down to the fundamental note. And as we do that, as we scale down, we create a major scale. So we already know a few notes of the A major scale, for example. Which are these notes? Uh, a, E and C sharp. Well done! We found these notes directly in A's overtones, so they belong to the A major scale. These three particular notes together gave us... gave us a chord. A chord. What? The A chord. Which A chord? Major. A major, no, because we're building this chord just from the notes from the overtone series, going from A, so it's an A major chord. So that's major scales, scaled down counting to 15. But minor scales are a little more convoluted. How did we get our minor chord? We did something to the major third, to C sharp in the case of A. You bring it down one uh, half a, a note. Brilliant. We made the third minor by lowering it a half step. So in the A minor chord and the A minor scale, we use C instead of C sharp, or rather a minor third rather than a major third. Now, do you remember the justification for this minor interval? The major interval we found between the fundamental, number one, and the fourth overtone, number five, once we scale five down. But the minor interval we found in a different way. We didn't look at any number's relationship to the fundamental note itself. The minor third we found between overtones, between the fourth and the fifth overtones, between numbers five and six, or in the case of the overtones of A, between C sharp and E. That's the minor third. So it wasn't like we found a C note in the overtones of A. We found a minor third between the overtones and then applied that interval to the fundamental A, and that's how we found C. So this is the difference between major and minor scales. The major scales just reflect the relationships between the fundamental and its overtones, between number one and the rest of the numbers once scaled down. But the minor scales also include relationships between the overtones themselves. So the minor realm is much more contrived than the major, and we hear this comparing the chords. A major, a minor. The minor chord is nowhere near as sure and stable as the major chord, but is maybe much more open to interpretation. So there's a big overlap between major and minor scales. Both scales share a lot of the same notes, or rather the same intervals. Intuitively, with what you already know about music, what interval quality would you expect to be the same in, in both major and minor scales? Well, if it's the major third that you change, it must be the perfect fifth. Or perfect generally. All the perfect All intervals the perfect. will be the same in major and minor scales. So which are our perfect intervals? Fifth, fourth and the fundamental. Well, the fundamental and what is one, on, one and the same? The fundamental and the octave. The octave, yeah. The perfect octave, of course, it's going to be the same, no? It's an octave that marks, that, that frames the scale, and we're fitting our notes within the octave, and then we have the perfect fifth, which is in the middle of the scale, and the perfect fourth. So perfect intervals are the same in both major and minor scales. So if I tell you that C major has no sharps or flats, the C major scale is just C to C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, just naming letters. So if I tell you that we don't need to make any notes sharp or flat, you can tell me the perfect fourth of C major. F. An F. And the perfect fourth of C minor? F. An F. The perfect fourth will be the same in both scales. By contrast, the major third of C major is, if C major has no sharps or flats? E. An E. But the minor third then of C is, how do you lower E a half step? E flat. E flat, you make it E flat. So what notes does a C minor chord have? So start with the fundamental. So it's C. 
A flat. So we just need the perfect fifth now, no? Of C. G. Well done. So C, the fundamental note, E flat, the minor third, and G, the perfect fifth. So the C minor scale or the C minor chord includes the notes C, E flat, and G. Most commonly in that order, but the notes of a chord can change order too. So for example, G might be the lowest note instead of C. The chord will sound slightly different, but we still know that it's C minor because our brains are subconsciously doing all this maths and understand that E flat and G come from C. Or in other words, that we're using the C minor scale. So in major scales, all our intervals from the fundamental note are perfect or major. So as we know that C major just has normal letter names, no sharps or flats, you can tell me the name of the interval from C to A. There's different parts of it. Think about one part at a time. The, the, the first part, you can find the number behind the interval, no? So count from C to A, including C. Six. A sixth. And what kind of sixth is this going to be? Perfect sixth. How many perfect intervals do we have in music? Three. Three. We found our three perfect intervals already. So if it's not perfect... Major. Major. A major sixth. Here's what a major sixth sounds like. I'll play the one in question between C and A. That's the notes separately and together. So that's our major sixth. C to A, a major sixth. And C to B? A major seventh. A major seventh. Not as harmonious as the major sixth, no? And if C to B is a major seventh, what note is a minor seventh from C? B flat? B flat, of course, a minor seventh. And so B flat belongs to C minor, to the C minor scale, whilst B straight B belongs to C major. Now C major isn't the only scale with all straight notes. A minor also has no sharps or flats, which in itself is a great demonstration of one of the first points we saw, that the notes in themselves are not as important as the intervals they make. C major and A minor use the very same notes, but one sounds major and the other sounds minor because of the intervals the notes create in the two scales either with A or with C. So C in C major is the fundamental note. But what is C in A minor? What is C from A? Third, major third. Well, so minor third. Good, a minor third. So that's the relevance of scale or key in music. The same notes can be performing different functions. They feel different depending on key, depending on the scale we are tapping into with those notes. Or in other words, depending on what note is the fundamental note, which note we consider to be number one. In C major, the G is the perfect fifth, and C is number one. C1 and the perfect fifth, G, or number three or 1.5 once scaled down. In A minor, A is number one, and the G is what interval from A? Work it out. What is G from A? Seventh, major seventh, a minor seventh. A minor seventh, because now we're in A minor. It's C major and A minor that share the same notes so that's key in music, how the same notes sound different because they are in a different key and generate different intervals from the fundamental note. Still, if A minor and C major have all the same notes, why is it A to C is a minor third and C to E is a major third when we count three letters in each case and have no sharps or flats in each case? And that is a good question. In the same way, why did we count five to get a perfect fifth from any note, no, A to E, C to G, D to A, with the exception of B, where we had to add a sharp. We went from B to F sharp. These are questions we have had the privilege 
to ignore until now because we've been focused on the maths rather than the naming system. But now we understand the mathematical nature of musical intervals, we can look a little closer at this whole naming system without it confusing us. So scales contain seven different notes, even though in music we have 12 different notes, 12 distinct pitches before we get to doubling or halving. This is why we have seven different note letters, A to G, plus five sharps or flats, rather than 12 different letters, which would be A to L, no? We want to have seven letters for the seven different notes of a scale. Using A to G plus sharps and flats ensures that every time we go up a degree in any scale, major or minor, we go up one letter. Never two, never staying on the same letter, always going up one letter, per scale degree. That letter might come as is or straight, no, as in C major and A minor, all the notes are straight, C, D, E, F, G, or the notes might carry a sharp or a flat, but either way, we'll always go up one letter at a time in any scale. What helps us achieve this are the sharps and flats, and the fact that the same note can be expressed in different ways. For example, C sharp and D flat are the same frequencies, or rather, you press the same key on the piano to get this note. The same with D sharp and E flat, or A sharp and B flat. This is what allows us, in the 24 different scales, 12 major and 12 minor, to always go up one letter per scale degree and still be talking about the same frequency proportions in all major and minor scales, even though some scales have sharps and flats and others don't. Now, for all of this to work, some compromises were made. The space between each note letter is not equal. We have a shorter space between B and C and D and F than between the rest of the letters. Already, we can see why A to C is a minor third and C to E isn't, it's a major third. Can you see why, if we have a shorter space from B to C and E to F, when we go from C to E, do we cross B to C or E to F? No. We don't cross that short space, do we? But when we go from A to C, we do. Mm -hmm. We have the short space between B and C. So even though in both cases we are counting three letters, we have two different intervals. C to E doesn't give us any short spaces. We have a large space from C to D and a large space from D to E. We have a major third. So that's why we have seven notes and only five sharps or flats. Two notes are closer to other letters than the rest. They are a half step rather than a whole step from their following letter. So these two notes are E and the perfect fifth of E, which is B. B. So that's an easier way to remember it. No, we have E and the perfect fifth of, of E, B. These two notes have a shorter space going to the next letter. So the short spaces are between B and C and D and F. C to E doesn't cross any of those short spaces, so it's a major third. So what kind of third is G to B? You are asking yourself, does G to B cross over either B to C or E to F? No. No, no short spaces. So what kind of third is it? No short spaces, major third. So it's a major third too. So what is a minor third from G? B flat. A B flat, of course. So between all note letters, we have a whole step, so two half steps, with the exception of B to C and E to F. And we can see, or even imagine this, thinking about a piano keyboard. We have a row of white keys, and then groups of black keys superimposed. The black keys in sets of threes and twos. The black keys on the piano give us sharps or flats, or rather a half step between letters. There are gaps in black keys between B and C and E and F because between those letters we have no sharps and flats. We just go from B to C, no B sharp, or rather B sharp is C. So we have 12 notes, 12 different frequencies before we get to doubling or halving to find octaves. Let's count them on our fingers so we can readily identify the 12 different tones using our seven letters and five sharps or flats. So first, let's start with A. A, A sharp or B flat, which is the same note, no, that's number two. Then we have B, that's number three. What do we have after B? 
C. C, good, that's a short space. And then? C sharp. C sharp. D. D. D sharp, E flat. Yeah, that's the same, no? D sharp or E flat, but let's just count with sharps. We might get confused. D sharp, so after D sharp we get? E. E, after E we get? F. Very good, that's the other small space. After F we get? F sharp. And then? G. And then? G sharp. Which gives us 12. After that we have A again, no? So we're repeating. So those are our 12 different tones. So to find the perfect fifth, in our first classes, we were just counting five letters up from the notes we were looking at, but we did come across the exception I mentioned, no? The perfect fifth of B was F sharp. Unlike the other perfect fifths, we saw we had to add a sharp in this case. Now you can tell me why. What is special yeah. about the perfect fifth from B to F sharp? You've got that, no, you've got that B, C. Okay, you found one small space from B to C. And then there's another one after E to F. Exactly. So this perfect fifth contains two reduced spaces, which is why we have to add the sharp. Mathematically, it's the same as any other perfect fifth. There's nothing different going on here, but because of our naming system, which we remember is artificial, much more than the maths at least, no? We have to add the sharp there. So yes, this perfect fifth contains two of these reduced spaces, whereas other perfect fifths contain one. Going from B to F, we cross both B to C and E to F. This all helps us understand that F sharp and sharps and flats in general are not any less of a note in their own right than what I'm calling straight notes. F sharp is not an off F, it's its own note. And as we know, it isn't just F sharp either, its name is flexible. Of course, it can be F sharp or G flat, depending on the context, depending on what note it is relating back to. So we have 12 notes in music rather than seven. And for that reason, we also have 12 major and 12 minor scales, a major and minor scale for each note, for each tone. 